orders rang out, fall in, dress the line, forward march, and the 2nd New Hampshire Infantry was off. The 2nd New Hampshire, 354 strong, led by a 21-year-old Colonel Edward L. Bailey, were sent to the John Wentz Farm, located near the Emmitsburg and Wheatfield Roads, near the soon-to-be-famous Peach Orchard. The artillery fire would be severe in this vicinity, and the 2nd New Hampshire and those other Union soldiers were fully exposed to that severe fire. A Confederate artilleryman will recall the severity of the artillery duel on July 2nd, 1863, saying that in the Civil War there was never a hotter, harder, or sharper artillery fire than on that afternoon. A soldier in the 2nd New Hampshire Infantry would also recall that the rear of the Wentz barn looked like a sieve because of the numerous volleys of canister fire that went pouring through it. At about 5 p.m., Bailey witnessed Brigadier General Joseph Kershaw's South Carolina Brigade advance across his front. Bailey went to his superior and asked for permission to charge. Upon receiving orders to charge, Bailey and his regiment went tearing down the slope and posted on the southern side of the Peach Orchard. As more Confederate soldiers were poured into the Peach Orchard, Ed Bailey would have to withdraw even further, this time to the top of the Peach Orchard, where he again called his men to halt and to deliver another volley into the charging Confederates. Bailey soon realized that any further resistance would be futile, so he called for a general withdrawal from the Peach Orchard and had his men move out quickly to Seminary Ridge. Ed Bailey and the 2nd New Hampshire were positioned in a dangerous part of the battlefield where they were exposed to deadly Confederate artillery fire. Was Bailey foolish to ask for permission to charge into the Confederate soldiers? How important is it for a leader to address a foreseeable problem?